Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ash Paulson, John Cartwright, and Steve Bowling to discuss the reveal of the Nintendo Switch Lite, along with all of the details that we know so far. So, let's get started. And right off the bat, guys, what do we think of this thing? It's a Switch that can't switch. It's <laughs> it's weird. But it also makes sense for a certain audience. It's It's kind of weird. Yeah, I think the fact that it's $200 makes so much sense. We have games like Pokemon and Animal Crossing coming out. This is going to fly off store shelves for um, for the, maybe the less enthusiast audience. Maybe not for us, but like kids and um, those who aren't really that into games might really dig this system. Yeah, I think this is what everyone expected. A cheaper, lighter Switch. Uh, and obviously you are going to lose some features along the way of trying to make something like this cheaper. I think I just held out hope that it would still have TV mode, and I'm a little I'm a little heartbroken that it doesn't. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I guess a big part of it though is it doesn't replace the existing Switch. It's just kind of a different thing, and in a lot of ways, this is more friendly for a portable system. It's smaller, the battery's better, and honestly, I think it looks looks nicer than the current Switch. We don't have any bezel going on for one. Um, it's just like a much more pleasing um, style for me. Well, we kind of do have bezel. That's actually the one part of the of the design I don't like about the Switch Lite is that colored bezel that matches the color of the system. Like, I kind of mm. wish it was just a black bezel on all three models. There's just something about... I don't know. I, I just don't want to see a yellow border around my screen at all times, you know? See, I'm kind of the opposite. I mean, maybe okay. not with the yellow one, but the blue one I think looks really nice. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. I guess, yeah. I, I, I'm just, that's the one thing I'm kind of on the fence on. Something about a colored border around my screen at all times just kind of bugs me, but I totally see that that's a subjective thing. Yeah. I mean, for me, this is a completely non-offensive addition to the Switch. It's it's one of those things, it's perfect for kids. The kids who like, hey, you have a 3DS, here you go. Here's the upgrade to the 3DS and you can play some games. Or And it's a cheaper price option uh, where kids, certain people just prefer to use handheld much more often and they don't care about the other features of the Switch. So from that aspect, it works. Yeah, it thinks it doesn't have the, the, this actual switching mode. That doesn't really matter too much for this thing. This, the, there's a audience, specific audience they're going for and they seem to nail it with this. I don't know. It just it, it, This is completely inoffensive to me. They're going for that 3DS audience. That dedicated yeah. handheld audience. Mm -hmm. I'd say they're, they're kind of going for that sort of 2DS portfolio with this where um, it kind of ditches the main mechanic of the system, which for 2DS was the 3D mechanic. With the Switch Lite, it's being able to switch. But it's still going to sell crazy. 2DS went way above all of, our, all of our expectations and sold incredibly well. So don't underestimate this. Absolutely. I, I see this thing flying off store shelves, especially once Animal Crossing hits, as you guys said. Uh, I think there's definitely a huge market for this, and I, I think you have to... This is one of those things where you have to look at it from the perspective of someone other than ourselves, like uh, other than gaming enthusiasts. This is not necessarily for that audience. However, there is a segment of that on audience who's going to love this because, let's say, they're traveling all the time, working, traveling, always commuting. This might appeal to them more if they don't really care about playing on a TV. And I remember a statement from Nintendo not that long ago saying they want to have multiple Switch systems in a single household. And I'm really considering getting one of these to be a second Switch because there's a lot of great games that you can only really play with local, local multiplayer, um, local wireless, I should say. And um, this seems way more ideal than just buying another Switch. Like, I might, even with Sword and Shield, I might get my fiance Sword and myself Shield and just, um, like, play simultaneously on different systems. Because this seems like the best way to kind of do that. Mm -hmm. And it is does kind of facilitate that idea as well, John, because uh, with an interview with CNET, Doug Bowser actually said that it will have the ability to transfer gameplay experiences between the two devices. There's more info to come, but that's their intention. So it's very possible for you to play a game on your Switch normal, and if you're going somewhere and you don't really <laughs> want to bring that along or risk it, you can just put it onto the Switch Mini and continue playing from there. At least that seems to be the idea. So they do take that account, that type of person into account as well, at least it seems to. Now, to be fair, this is Nintendo, so, you know, let's maybe scale back our expectations <laughs> of course. where that specific thing is concerned. Like, who knows when that functionality is actually coming? You know, Doug Bowser may be completely truthful. I think he is. I just don't know about that timeline, you know? Mm. Yeah, I'm not expecting a whole lot by way of system transfer mechanics at launch for this thing. That's two months away, basically. And if Nintendo has proven anything, it's that they don't really get the mechanical bits and pieces of, of networking stuff working in a timely fashion. Yeah. But one thing they do get most of the time is D-pads. And they kind of messed up on that with the current... Oh, I wouldn't say messed up. The Switch was designed in a way that a D-pad didn't necessarily make sense. 
But with the Switch Lite, we are getting a proper D-pad, and just looking at the images now, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it and it makes me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> just know, knowing that I that I technically, I, I mean, the, the Nintendo fanboy part of me wants this device badly because it's new Nintendo hardware, but the uh, practical old man in me says there's no reason to buy this for, for what I use a Switch for, but I want that D-pad, and the fact that they said that there's no planned joy-con revisions in the near future just kind of broke my heart a little bit mm -hmm. i know they're they're sticking to their guns on that which seems so strange because they i feel like that thing would fly off shelves marketed to a certain audience so who knows why but that's a different discussion for a different day as we said it's only 200 dollars, and the release date is coming up very quickly it's uh, on uh, september 20th which is the same day as Link's awakening which seems like a very smart move you get a kid with uh, a new switch and hey here's that new zelda you're talking about yeah and i mean it's it's not as though Link's awakening is a game that necessarily you know makes a case for itself as a cutting edge switch title visually it's got a great look to it of course i'm not calling it ugly but it's not one of those games that it is a you know like a showcase piece for what the Switch sure. can do visually necessarily. So it's I think it's a smart choice of a game to release day and date with the Switch Lite. I am curious about one thing though. Um, CNET specified that because it's using an updated processor, that the battery life is going to be longer. And that other processor has me curious. And I wonder if other games will be optimized for maybe high resolutions in handheld mode. For instance, um, let's take... Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which has a pretty rough uh, handheld performance, and I wonder if that updated chip is going to make it maybe native 720p or just higher than it currently is on the on the modern Switch. That's a you know that's a really good question. Although I feel like if it was that that would be something they'd want to scream from the heavens, kind of like with the mm. the new Nintendo 3DS XL and those specific well Xenoblade being a really good example, like the one of the very few games that actually was released for it that took advantage of that uh, increased processor speed. I wonder if they would want to shout about it, though, because th I think their the message here is this does not replace the existing Switch and is more That's just true. a supplement. And um, if it were more powerful, I'm not sure that would be a good look for them. And I kind of think that that may be something that they investigate in a different model down the line that is intended to be seen as more powerful and more robust. And that may be something that they don't want to take away from if they do intend on doing that, and I personally do think that that's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I'm with Ash on this one. I think if the intention were to uh, improve handheld performance for this model of Switch, that that would be one of their major marketing points, even if it risks some type of confusion, because I, I don't think they'd pour the effort into that without uh, without telling people about it. So I think that uh, they we're not going to see any type of uh, handheld performance improvements. I'd be happy to be proven wrong, but uh, I just don't see them doing it without without you know, beating their chest about it. Right. Mm. And it is notable that in that same uh, CNET uh, article, uh, Doug Bowser did say that there are no plans for a Switch upgrade this year. So people were talking about a Switch Pro for a long time. It's not coming this year, that's for sure. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's kind of fine, though. Um, most of the upcoming games aren't really like graphical powerhouses. A lot of them are portable focus games. So I think it kind of makes sense for now to focus on the light. You know, it's funny, everyone's talking about the lack of TV mode, and that is obviously a huge deal, but, uh, and John, I think you'll you'll feel me on this, the, the part that really hurts to me is actually <laughs> no HD rumble, no gyro. That, I mean, I get it, but that, uh, that's, that, those two things appeal to me so much in terms of what the Switch can do, and, like, I mean, just think of Breath of the Wild, just, just being able to use gyro aiming with, you know, bow and arrow and stuff like that. That just, it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Mm. And, just you know, a like. Double check. Um, was no gyro confirmed, or are they just talking about no, like, motion controls for 1 2 Switch? You know, that's that's a good question. I don't know if they actually s completely they're specified. Kind of different. Or maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe I'm misinterpreting what they're saying about it, because if the system itself does still have gyro, then that's fine. That's actually fantastic. But, yeah, you know, that's a, that would be a great thing to clarify. But I, I do feel you, though. I, I can't play Splatoon 2 without gyro. <laughs> and if this doesn't have gyro, then that's a massive downgrade. Yeah. That that does seem like that's... There are certain games that... Yeah, it, it affects a lot of them, so that, that's a good yeah. point. It might be a thing where we kind of misinterpreted that, where it seemed like they're, like, because of no 1-2 Switch, it was like, oh, okay, no gyro, but no. It, I think oh, wait, it's... here's a point. Here's a point. Breath of the Wild has um, those... Those shrines, which um, work only with motion controls, you have to like flip the entire controller oh, around. Right. Oh, that's true. Um, so it has that to can't have work gyro. without. 
Right. But right, again, okay. I guess we'll be like turning the entire system around <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Which, that's going to be a bit messy, but I but guess then, it works. So I guess I would then, I guess, is, would that be the accelerometer? I, I'm so bad at the terminology. I, yeah, I don't know the terminology. <laughs> yeah. So, but that has to still be in the system then. It has to be. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that, that makes me feel a little bit better. But I will say, as a self professed fan of HD Rumble, I get why it's not there, but it does hurt. In my opinion, mm-hmm. I'm I'm truly upset about the, the fact that there's no kickstand. That's that's a, that's a, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, joke all you want, but I use that a ton. Like whenever whenever I'm sitting at the table with my kids or something, and I'm playing a game kind of casually, I'll I'll throw the kickstand on and take the Joy-Con off so I can uh, so I don't have the switch right in my face. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be as missed as probably. I, I, I think I'll, I'll be in the small contingent of people that'll miss that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's less that I won't miss it and more that I just want a better kickstand. Yeah, and that, this, that's this is not the sure. model that's going to well, have that. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of hoping that the light will fit into the charging stand. I don't know if it will or won't, the Nintendo official one, so that I can still get that kind of tabletop mode functionality if I feel like it. But, I mean, it's a little more complicated, but I'd still, I'd still welcome it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Speaking as someone with kids, though, Steve, um, would you consider buying this for them? I already bought my kids a normal one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so, take it back. <laughs> well, so the thing for me is, though, at least my kid, she's six, and it's a little early for her to have a Switch, honestly, but, I mean, she sees me play mine all the time. But the big thing for me is that she actually really enjoys having the option of playing on the TV or, or playing in handheld mode. I will say she greatly prefers handheld mode, but as a parent with the normal model of the Switch, I'm terrified of letting her do that too much because I worry that I'll walk away and then I'll come back to a Joy-Con snapped off a rail or something. So uh-huh. I'd be less afraid of that with this one, but I know she enjoys TV mode. Like, she loves it when I tell her, hey, plug it into my dock on my TV and you can play, you know, on, on a big 65-inch screen if you want. So I think there's appeal there even with kids, but... I also think that, you know, most younger children aren't really going to care. Like, if I ga- if I swapped out her current Switch for a Switch Lite tomorrow, she'd be excited that it was yellow. And yeah. she wouldn't, She I don't think she'd question me too much on the fact that she can't play it on a TV anymore. Dad, where's the HD rumble? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dad, there's no IR camera on this one, Dad. Yeah, I don't know. There's something wrong here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, can't play my sandwich eating mini game anymore, Daddy. <laughs> right. And you know, and even though this is not necessarily the kind of thing like someone like your daughter would care about either, there is the point that because the screen size has been uh, shrank by you know a few tenths of an inch, certain games are in, in general going to look sharper at that you know same resolution. It's still 720p, but because of that smaller screen size, you're getting more PPI. And so games are actually going to look look a little sharper in handheld mode on the Switch Lite, which is just, you know, kind of a cool... It's a, it's a slight give and take in terms of everything you're losing, mm-hmm. but it is kind of nice to get that slightly increased bit of visual fidelity in return. Yeah, it's not oh, that absolutely. much of a downgrade either. We, the Switch is 6.2 inches, the Switch uh, Lite is 5.5 inches, uh, you know, it's, it's not that much of a loss. And uh, we actually we never got actual, like size comparison with the Switch Lite uh, to the regular Switch, but CNET once again did say that it's about as long as a Switch, uh, as a normal Switch, minus one Joy-Con. So that kind of, you can kind of hold that in your hand and get an idea of just how big this thing is or what the size difference. But, uh, I mean, definitely not too small, but definitely more manageable than uh, a normal Switch as far as putting in your, I guess, jacket pocket and going going around anywhere. One thing I will say is that as interesting as the design decision to not have detachable Joy-Con is, I do like that A, it contributes to this overall kind of more uniform design for the Switch Lite where there are no seams or lines where things have to detach. It's one seamless design, which, and I, and I think the whole one color design looks really cool, like the, the turquoise one. The front of it is, and the back of it's turquoise, and I think that's a really cool, just unifying design theme that I really like. And uh, I don't know, I, I, it's it's an interesting decision, but I think it works in favor of what the Switch Lite's trying to be. Oh no, mm-hmm. it, this is exactly what the Switch Nintendo's all about. They're having different colors of systems. They can do special editions. Like they wasted no time. Special edition version of uh, uh, for <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, releasing on November 8th, a week a week before Sword and Shield. doesn't come with the game at all, but hey, you have a special edition Switch, and now they can finally start doing that rather than just Joy-Con colors. Uh, and I can almost see them releasing Joy-Con colors 
in the same you know the same as these that we have here. Oh yeah, and and I have to say that that Pokemon Sword and Shield Special Edition one looks really slick, really Absolutely. nice looking. Yeah, it, it's almost there for me. I'll be honest though, I don't like colored analog sticks, like black or oh, white yeah. or or death. I, I can't stand the blue <laughs> and red, the blue and red color scheme, and and the buttons all being the same color kind of doesn't do much for me either. But it is, I mean, it, it's really beautiful. It makes me wish they would have just released this thing in in just white. I would have I would have loved to see an all white switch light. Oh wow that. <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, it's only a matter of time. You know they're going to yeah, do sure a billion and one colors for this thing. One thing I find interesting is that the, the verbiage, Nintendo's verbiage for the Switch Lite, very, goes out of its way to specify that the Switch Lite will not connect via its USB-C port to a Switch dock. It cannot output to a TV, which obviously we know that. But I find that interesting because I almost wonder if it wouldn't make sense for them financially, if for their bottom line, to later on release a Switch Lite dock that you can buy into optionally if you decide down the line, hey, I want that functionality, but I don't want to buy a $300 regular Switch. No, I'll buy an and $80 I just find that uh, interesting. dock. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, <laughs> but I can buy this $80 Switch Lite dock instead and still buy into that functionality while not having the full thing. I just I just find it interesting that they went out of their way to specify, no, this thing cannot and will not connect to any sort of video out. I think it's probably just a really laid out there so people aren't confused. It's like, hey, it's called a sure. Switch. I should be able to do this. And you yeah. know, they've got to put it out there like, no, you cannot switch on this Switch. <laughs> so yeah. I, 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 right. I can't see them releasing a, a dock in the future. That kind of kills the whole point. No, I don't think they will either. Right. Uh-huh. We'll, we'll have to wait for the iFixit teardown of this thing when it comes out. But if I had to guess, and I think we talked about this uh, back when Switch Mini rumors were flying around, uh, there is a chip in the original Switch that enables or enables that docking functionality. Oh, if okay. I had to guess, even though it's a pretty cheap component, I'm betting it's not even in the Switch Lite. That Probably would make not. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you guys feel about um, games like Super Mario Party basically be, basically being unplayable unless you buy another set of Joy-Con? And even then, even then, you don't have a kickstand, so it's going to be kind of hard and uncomfortable to play that kind of game on the Switch Lite. The fact that Nintendo even says, oh yeah, well you can buy you know, regular Joy-Con and play, who would ever want to do that? <laughs> like, yeah. can you imagine like, having against... your... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Either having it lying flat on a table or propped up awkwardly against a wall or something with your two regular-sized Joy-Con. That, you're... that doesn't seem fun. I can't, I can't imagine a single scenario or, mm. or, or location in which that could ever be fun. Yeah, I, I guess it's better than it not being playable at all, but sure. it, it definitely doesn't seem ideal. I think it's worth remembering that this is something that is clearly designed... I mean, even if the ads show adults playing this thing, like a guy on a space station playing the Switch Lite, <laughs> uh, this this is for children. It, it, and, you know, as far as... I don't know a whole lot of eight-year-olds that have a group of friends they play Mario Party with on the regular. So... <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that Nintendo, you know, they're saying this because they don't want to make the new Switch sound worse than the old Switch. Uh, they're not going to come out and say, hey, it doesn't do everything the old Switch does, and that kind of sucks. They're going to give you a reason like, oh, but you can still play these games this way. That's kind of what they have to do. But I think they're fully aware that this is a Switch meant for young people who probably won't be having parties where they're playing 1-2-Switch or Mario Party or other games that require external Joy-Con. But they're, they're also not going to say we've completely closed the door on these games either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. It does make me wonder if they're going to be putting more focus into games that allow for handheld mode, like not have those sort of weird functionalities that, like the, the uh, like Mar- Super Mario Party has in the future. Mm-hmm. Or if they'll just be like, well, it's for the Switch. <laughs> that actually is a good point. If they will, you know, will they or won't they factor the Switch Lite specifically into their design decisions going forward. I guess it's also worth noting that Mario Party was bundled with a, with a pair of Joy-Con at launch. And I wonder if they'll do that with maybe any other games that require Joy-Con, but I kind of doubt they'll ever make any more games that require the Joy-Con. So I actually think that we'll see a clear line in the sand, as it were. I think if it's a game that is traditionally geared towards younger children as well as adults, that you'll see a focus on handheld play, but if it's a game that people tend to that that gears more towards an older audience that you'll probably still get all the weird OG switch specific functionality that we're kind of used to. Uh, but I definitely think when you look at games that could market well towards a younger audience that you'll see a bigger focus on handheld play. That makes sense. One rather uh, I guess not not really major but um, an, an odd misread is Labo came out well it's been coming out since last year up until this year 
And that was clearly marketed at children, but you can't play it using the Switch Mini or the Switch Lite because you need a pair of Joy-Con. So that, <laughs> right. that thing that's maybe existed for a year now, and there's like four of them, will basically not work with the target target product. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is, it's it's had four releases. It's over the past year, and none of them are really stuck. The only per- people I hear talk about Switch VR is Andre. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I, I do get wrong. the sense that not even Nintendo currently quite knows where Labo fits into their overall scheme. I think it's something that they've tried, and it's been moderately successful. But I'm not sure it's uh-huh. something they want to hedge their bets on necessarily in terms of designing iterations of their flagship hardware around that, you know? Sure. Mm-hmm. But I agree. It is, it is kind of a weird, you know, inconsistency in their lineup. And, and you'd think that, yeah, they'd want to have Labo, you know, workable with the Switch Lite. But that's just, it seems like Labo is just kind of its own weird outlier right now for Nintendo. That about sums it up, yeah. <laughs> uh, w- one thing uh, I wanted to mention, I-, I think it was you, Steve, where you mentioned, uh, you know, or maybe you, Derek, playing the astronaut in the trailer playing a Switch Lite uh, oh, yeah. you know, in the shuttle. And can we just talk about that trailer? That was one of the, even by Nintendo standards, that was really over the top. Like, that song was intense. Kind of liked it. But either way, that song was intense. And can I just say, I want to be the kind of trendy person who has the kind of trendy friends who will call me up and meet me at, like, Santa Monica Pier or whatever the hell that was, and play Switch. Like, who does that? <laughs> do, do, does anyone actually do that? Well, it's like... Well, there's With the Switch kid. Mini, we might. I know. Well, that's true. Well, yeah. It's, it's like those just kids like... in the original trailer that were the basketball's being played in the background, but they're playing basketball on the Switch. <laughs> exactly. Like, I... <laughs> Or, or Karen and her rooftop party. Exactly. Where like, they're like, I, yeah. hey, we're having fun. She's like, hold on, let me bring Mario Odyssey along for this. <laughs> no, like, I, I want to know if these re- if these situations ever happen in real life, because they seem so goofy. They I do. I love it. But it's, yeah, you know, it's it's still kind of wonderful, but... It, that, totally. Yeah. Well, guys, do you have any f- other thoughts on the Switch Lite, or is this pretty much what we see, what we get? Can we all agree that turquoise is the best color? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> although, although I'm, I'm yeah. really torn between turquoise and yellow and I'll be honest oh. as much as I'm as, as sad as I am about this I know that come September I will probably buckle and I will buy one of these things but I don't know what color I'll leave with until I get to the store mm-hmm. so I think yellow looks really good when you're playing Mario Maker but that's that's the only time it looks good turquoise see, looks good all the other times see I see, need to yeah. see them in the flesh though like side by side I, I'm, I'm with you John blue is my favorite color to begin with so I'm sure that I will I will end up picking up a turquoise one if I pick one up. But the yellow one looks so good in the press photos that it's like hard to ignore. Yeah, I'm not usually a big yeah. fan of yellow, but this is a surprisingly good yellow. And John, just imagine it's a tie-in with Tropical Freeze. It's a banana color. But the blue one could be Tropical nice. Freeze as well, Derek. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's, yeah. I need a yellow and I, blue. You know, <laughs> I, I'm biased toward blue myself, obviously. You know, blue's my favorite color, but you know, my wife's favorite color is yellow. And so even though that one seems like it might not carry that much of an appeal, there are some people out there who really love yellow, and I could see her, if she played video games a little more often than she does right now, I could see her totally going for the yellow one. But I agree with you guys. In general, personally, it's, it's got to be turquoise for me. If I was getting one, but that's the thing. Kind of like you, Steve, I, I, it sounds like you're going to buckle. The Nintendo enthusiast part of me really wants one of these, but the pragmatic part of me knows that it, it doesn't really fit into my life personally and how I play Switch. But I do want to get one just for the <laughs> sake of having one. Yeah, I love how none of us mentioned gray. It's not a great gray, honestly. It isn't. No. Yeah, it, it's it's a bore. It, you can't put it up next to such vibrant colors and expect people to want it. I I get why they're doing it because there is a certain segment like traveling business professionals who also game. Maybe you just don't want like a bright yellow or, or bright blue device in your in your bag, but. I, I can't imagine it's going to sell very well stacked up next to those two beautiful options. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I feel like the white buttons are the most jarring on the grey model. Whereas they look, yeah. they kind of work on the yellow and blue one, but the, the grey one just looks kind of, I don't know, just a bit bleh. Now yeah. give it like black and red accents and market it as a NES edition Switch Lite <laughs> and I'm there. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. Yeah, then then I definitely buy one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think that covers it for our Switch Lite discussion, so thank you for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on the Switch and other things gaming as well. Until next time. 
Bye.